everyone, this is Deborah Richardson and today I am putting the AP in Happy where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. This podcast will give a voice to accounts payable team members by talking about the growing reality of cyber attacks in their world and which vendor setup and vendor management techniques they can apply to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Today's podcast episode is brought to you by the five day vendor master file cleanup. Do you trust the data in your vendor master file? Well, if you have less than 5,000 active vendor records and need to prepare for a vendor self registration portal or for 1099 and 1042 IRS annual forms distribution, you are in luck. We have vendor validations, including watch list screening, duplicate vendor review, vendor inactivation recommendations, and more. Go to DebraRRichardson.com, that's D-E-B-R-A-R-R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S-O-N.com slash consulting, or email me at Debra, D-E-B-R-A, at Debra rrichardson.com for a quote today. Today's episode will highlight a common issue in vendor master files, the lack of a valid vendor email address. Today, I have nine tips that you will want to hear to find those missing vendor email addresses. Keep listening. Welcome to episode 51, nine ways to collect missing vendor email addresses to update the vendor master file. So if you're getting ready to implement your accounts payable automation, such as dynamic discounting or a vendor portal project, what do you need to increase adoption? A valid vendor email address. Lack of a valid email address in the vendor master file can have the following five effects in accounts payable. So number one is with a vendor portal implementation slash AP automation project. Not having a valid vendor email address removes the option for vendor email communication, letting them know about the upcoming change and also the subsequent use of the solution. Number two, working capital solutions. So not having a valid email address for your vendor can decrease the participation or enrollment from vendors because they are unaware of alternative payment options. The next one, number three, is remittance payment information. So if you don't have a valid vendor email address, you can't send the remittance information, which increases calls to the AP help desk requesting invoices included in a payment due, again, to not receiving that remittance information. Number four is with purchase order delivery. So if you don't have an email uh, address in some accounting system in ERPs, no purchase orders can be sent automatically. And the last way not having a valid vendor email address in your vendor master file can affect accounts payable is vendor record confirmation. So not having that vendor email address affects the ability to reduce the potential for fraud in the vendor master file by sending email confirmations for the requested changes. Now, not having that email address means you cannot send those email confirmations. Now, I do have a podcast that talks about sending email confirmations to vendors after changes. It is episode 42 if you'd like to check that out. So now that we've talked about 
the effects of not having a valid vendor email address in your vendor master file. Let's talk about those valid emails and how we can get them. And one thing I'd like to point out first is that it's not just valid emails that we want for the vendors, it's the right emails. So which emails are needed for the vendor master file and how do you get them? So most accounting systems ERPs have a separate email for remittance information which may be a generic email ar at abccompany.com. Um, collect this one and make sure it's in the correct field on the vendor record that's needed to push the remittance to the vendor. And some ERPs will clearly identify two, again, separate fields, one for contact information or contact email address and one for a remittance email address. It's also good practice to require at least a remittance email address at vendor setup. And I know a lot of people require it or a lot of um, vendor maintenance teams will require an email address at vendor setup, but they don't always require a remittance email address unless the payment method is EFT. And what I'm saying is that with all vendor setups, require at least a remittance email address no matter the payment method. So next, you wanna collect the names and the email addresses of the points of contact. So your contact information, um, and you're, you, you will use that to validate vendor record changes. Recording multiple contacts, if available, is better, and that will give additional options for confirmations and will assist with authentication if those contacts call or send an email to the AP help desk for assistance. Lastly, you want to identify those purchase order vendors that need an email address to automate purchase order delivery. Again, that can be a separate email address from the remittance email address and from your contact email addresses. So we have identified three different types of email addresses that you may need in your vendor master file. One is the remittance email address. Two is the point of contact, your contact email address. And then lastly, your purchase order um, email address that purchase orders need to be delivered to. So how do you find those missing email addresses? So for those that need to obtain missing email addresses for existing vendors in the vendor master file, here are nine ways to get either the email address or the contact information to request the applicable email addresses from the vendor. Number one, invoices. So pull invoice hard copies or their images and invoices can contain not only remittance email addresses, but also purchase order delivery email addresses as well as uh, contact email addresses. Number two, purchase orders. So email addresses may be for purchase order delivery only or they can contain purchase order contact email addresses that you may be able to reach out to to find the applicable email addresses for accounts payable. Number three is contracts. Now contracts may include payment instructions which may have the accounts receivable email address or the points of contact. Number four, this is a manual process and it takes some time, but it may be necessary if you do not have any documentation on hand or if the documentation you do have does not include email addresses. So to send a letter, you can use a remittance address from the vendor master file. That may be able to come from some of the other sources on the list. So if you check the invoice and the contract or the purchase order, and it didn't have email addresses, sometimes they will most likely have a telephone number, especially the invoice. So number five is stakeholder groups in your company. So 
I learned the hard way that accounts payable, the accounting system or ERP is not the only place that your vendor's data can be in. So while I, AP collects and retains vendor data and hopefully valid vendor data in the vendor master file for the purpose of payments, other groups in your company may use that vendor data for a different reason, especially if they collect it and then send that uh, information to AP vendor maintenance to set up um, or uh, change an existing vendor. So even though that's a scary thing and that whole master data governance um, is another topic for another long podcast, you may be able to take advantage or find some value in the fact that they're collecting information and then reach out to those groups to obtain whatever email addresses they have. So number six is your third party AP solution. So many third party solutions collect vendor email addresses and other contact information. So leverage those solutions at your company since that may have or those solutions may have more up to date information, especially if the vendor is logging in to update their data to add invoices, for example, if it's an e invoicing solution, leverage those you may get points of contact, you may get remittance uh, emails. So take advantage of the fact that you have another place where you can get uh, vendor information. Number seven, LinkedIn company pages. So LinkedIn, if you don't have a valid company website in your vendor master file, you can go to LinkedIn company pages and it can provide you with a valid URL to the company website. And that brings us to number eight, which is the company website. Now you can get from the company website most likely at least a generic email address or telephone number that you can call and request more specific information from um, let's say the AR team if you ask for them when they call. So you can use those generic email addresses, generic phone number to call and request the correct email addresses for the remittance for the purchase order and also for the contact. Now the very last one is if you have, if you're one of the companies that have multiple ERPs, you can look at other vendor master files. Check each system for at least the starting point, but be careful since different systems may mean that it's different types of spend, different company entities, and those email addresses and contacts can be different. But again, it is a starting point. So just a quick recap of the eight ways to find the applicable email addresses from the vendor. One is invoices, two are purchase orders, three are contracts, four is call or send a letter to the vendor, five is stakeholder groups in your company, six is third party AP solutions, seven is LinkedIn company pages, seven is a company website, and eight is your other vendor master files. So those are the eight ways and a quick reminder that if during this email search project you identify existing email addresses that need to be updated, send a confirmation to the old email address as part of your internal controls to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Again, that information is, along with more, is included in episode 42, send a notification to vendors after updates in the vendor master file, episode 42. So I'd love to hear what additional ways you have used to update the vendor email addresses in your vendor master file. So be sure to comment on the platform that you use to listen. So thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed the 51st episode of the Putting the AP in Happy podcast, where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud.
Don't forget to check the show notes for the links mentioned in the podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing and writing a review of my podcast on the platform that you use to listen. Stay happy. Thank you.